Editing is one of those things that I think is the absolute most important thing when it comes to creating an interesting piece of content because editing is basically where you put your own style onto your videos because everyone can shoot the same as me or Daniel Schiffer or even James Matthews but when it comes to the editing that is where all of us kind of differ and do our own thing and when it comes to my b-roll sequences such as the poker b-roll the woodworker b-roll and the what is it called the how to shoot cinematic footage handheld b-roll do we call it b-roll i think so all of those sequences are basically edited in the same way and i have kind of like my own style of editing those kind of sequences together and personally i'm using final cut pro to edit all my videos in and that is mainly because i'm really really familiar with final cut pro i know that a lot of you are probably using premiere pro but a lot of these things that i'm doing in my videos is something that you can do in Premiere Pro as well. So the absolute first thing that we did for this B-roll sequence was that we needed to have a piece of music that was interesting to listen at and not too heavy because I want to have a piece of music that was kind of like metal, you know, it fits with the drummer being like hardcore and all that. And since I'm using Epidemic Sound for a lot of my videos when I'm looking for music and sound effects, I went on there and I sorted out on metal and epic and tried to find like some kind of song that would be good for a sequence like this. And what I really like about Epidemic Sound is that you can download the stems of the song, which is basically that you can download the drums, the guitar, the bass and the melody separately. What I did then was that I removed the drums so that Alex could actually record his own drumming to that piece of music so that we could incorporate his craft into my craft with a song that's already written. So let me show you exactly how I cut that piece of music to make it shorter and more interesting without being any kind of like cuts in the music. When you've downloaded all the stems from Epidemic Sound, then you get a folder with the full song and all the different stems included. So in this case, we have the melody, instrument, drums, and the bass. And we wanna mark all of these and drag them into our project. And then we're gonna drag the stems so that all of them starts from the beginning because if we were to like put a couple of uh, frames in between them, then it would be totally out of sync and it would sound really, really bad. And to make this easier, we're just gonna expand the video file so we can see more of the beats that is actually going on in the music files. So looking at stems individually, we can see that on the bass, there's like kind of a good rhythm going on there. And then on the drums, we have a lot of spikes that we can use to make sure that we're actually cutting the music on the beat. And in this case, we're only gonna focus on the drums because we'll have all the other stems. So if we are cutting the drums at the right place, then the other stems will probably be kind of like disguised within that as well. So we're gonna zoom in and then we're gonna go here and then we're gonna move frame by frame using the arrow keys on the keyboard and just as the spike hits the top that is where we're gonna cut this whole piece so we're gonna press b and then we're gonna hold shift and then we're gonna cut this while i was listening through this piece of music then i found that over here like at the two minute mark then there was a really good like drum beat that was going on and that is something that i wanted to have like at the beginning of the sequence so we want to move forward just to where the spike is, like right here. And then we hit B, and then we're gonna hold down Shift, and then we'll cut it, and then we're gonna choose A for the select tool. We gotta mark everything, and then we're gonna hit backspace to delete. Okay, so let's listen back. Perfect. And right after the snare drums, that is where I want to have the bass drop. Like, boom. I really, really like having the bass drops. I think they are super cool. And it's kind of like, I think I have them in almost every single one of my B-roll sequences, but they look dope and they sound dope. So we're going to zoom in here and we can see every single bead of the snare drum that is made. 
and we want to have four hits off the snare drum which is going to be one two three four and then the fifth is going to be the bass drop so we're going to cut it like right here so we're going to hit b and hold down shift and then we're going to choose a and move this forward so that we we'll listen back and there that is where we want to have the bass drop like boom so there's been a lot of you asking about my sound effects and a lot of those are actually from Epidemic Sound but they are also from Sound Snap. And most of my like bass drops that I have in my video is actually from Sound Snap. And I actually used two of the bass drops for this particular video to give that extra depth of uh, the hit like I want to have. So the first one that I used is the cinematic subsonic bass drop 2 which is uh, actually a pretty good sound and I really like the effect that it gives. So we're gonna drag this to the timeline and what we want to do now is that we want to time the hit with the last snare drum that is coming. So, so again, we want to move frame by frame to that sound and then we're gonna mark the sound clip and we're gonna hit M to make sure that we set a marker and we can write start. So we're going to zoom in slightly. So now we're going to make sure that the marker of this sound clip hits the end of the drum clip that we got. So listening back to this. Perfect. And then we can add the second hit to give that extra depth to the bass drop. So we're going to drag this one down here as well. And then we're going to mute this, mark the clip and hit V. And then we're going to go to this and then we're going to go frame by frame until you hear that the bass drop actually starts. So we're gonna hit M for a marker, and then we're gonna drag this back to the same point where we had the bass drop above. And we're gonna like lower the volume slightly, and now we can unmute the first bass drop, and then we can listen back to this. Whoa, that's going on. And when it was done with the bass drops, what I did was that I counted the amount of beats that the drums would do in that period of time so that it would feel like the bass drop was still having the same beat as when the drums are starting. It's kind of like, kind of a musician thing. And if you've done any kind of music, then you know that timing to the beat is really important. So listening back to this again. That is where we wanted to start. What I did is that I grabbed this sound clip and then I duplicated this. So I hold Alt and drag it down. And then I go up here and I choose reverse clip. And then I drag it to somewhere around there to the marker again. Then I shorten it down and then I make sure that it fades in. And then we play this back. And that basically gives us this like so that when the drum starts it feels like it sucks everything in and now we can just grab the drums and drag them to the end of this clip so we're almost done with cutting the music the last thing that i want to do is to cut the music like to make sure that the ending climax comes a little bit closer and i want to make sure that it comes right after the small like uh how do you say like uh, toms so we're gonna hit b for the blade tool and then we're gonna hit shift and cut it and then we're gonna move forward to this place so we're gonna hit b again to cut it and then shift cut everything and a mark it delete and Perfect. And there we go. Now the whole like music piece is all done, but what we want to do is to just mute the instruments when he's doing like that before the last piece of like, uh, how do you say? Uh, climax. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna hit B and then I'm gonna hit shift and then cut it right here and then we're gonna choose every stem except for the drums and we're gonna hit V. So let's play that back. Awesome. And at the last part where the drums is going out I want to remove the some of the instruments as well. So we're gonna make sure that we are on the beat and then we're gonna cut it 
and then we're gonna go and choose the instruments and then we're gonna hit V so that the drums are feeling more like powerful at the end. And this is exactly the way that I cut this piece of music together and then I sent Alex this file without the drums and then he laid down his own drum track to that. What we did then is basically that I did a copy paste of his drums into this file, which was actually super simple because he played at the exact same BPM as the drums were going in the song. Okay, so now that you're done with cutting the audio together as you want it to be, that is where the whole editing process starts. And I'm gonna do a breakdown how I synced everything to the beat of the music, because that is like one of the most important things with this whole sequence was to have the feeling that he was actually playing the drums from each angle that I shot it from. So I'm gonna mark all the clips right here and then I'm gonna hit Command R and this is gonna bring up the speed ramping that we did to the clips. And as you can see here on the timeline, we have a lot of clips that are both sped up, slowed down, and playing back at normal speed. And the reason that we have so many different kind of playback speeds on this timeline is because when we shot this sequence, what we did is that we shot a couple of times when he was playing it back in real time, but then we also shot a couple of times where he played it back at 210 beats per minute, instead of 180. So what that allowed me to do was that I can shoot this sequence in 30 frames per second and then slow that down where I wanted to slow it down, but it still looks like he's playing back in real time. It gave us this like cinematic look in 4K, but we were able to slow things down when we got into the editing process. So the way that I managed to time the clips to the beat of the music is basically that I had the internal recording on, on my a 7 III, so I recorded the audio at the same time as I was shooting the video. What we did was that we played back the first sequence from a couple of different angles, and then we jumped to the rest of the song and played that back a couple of times, and then we jump to certain points in the song where there's actually a beat to distinguish from where we are starting. So for example, when he starts playing, I shot it from a couple of different angles as he was playing the same thing. And then as I started the edit, I could actually see the audio track on the video file and time that to his actual drums that we had recorded. Another thing that I did to some of the clips to give it that extra oomph to it when you watched it back was to give it like a little bit of a shake when he hits the cymbals or smashes the bass drum to like make it feel a little bit more epic and it's actually pretty simple to do and what I did here is that I grabbed the effect that is called handheld and then I dragged it onto the clip and then I went up to the video inspector and then moved forward until he actually like hits the bass drum. So right here is where I set a keyframe to 100 and then moved forward three frames and set another keyframe that went down to zero. And that basically gives us a huge shake for like two frames, which is just barely noticeable. It's a super simple effect, but I think it's really cool. And it's actually something that I used in the poker b-roll as well as Oscar is putting down a glass to give it that like shake when he's like hitting the table. And if you're interested in buying the editing breakdown for the poker b-roll, it's gonna be down in the description below. So if you want to check that out, it's gonna be down to you. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, please do give it a thumbs up because it does help a lot. So thanks so much for that. And if you haven't subscribed yet, that'd be highly appreciated. Gonna be somewhere, uh, no, down here, always. And um, thanks so much for watching and uh, until next time, take care.